the News 4 Rundown is sponsored by FH Fur. Tonight on the Rundown, police say an officer struck by a vehicle on a busy Maryland interstate may have been targeted by a teenage driver. Amy Cho has the latest on the investigation and that officer's condition. A Northern Virginia man gets a hero's honor today after rushing into a burning building to save his daughter. He'll sit down for the first interview with Drew Wilder. And on Capitol Hill, hundreds of protesters in custody during an act of civil disobedience around the Israel-Hamas war. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. A lot to get to, and we're so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown. It's our newscast streaming for you. I'm Tommy McFly. I'm Jim Adley. It's Wednesday, October 18th, and we begin with the latest developments in the ongoing Israel-Hamas war and its impacts all over the world and here at home. Yeah, in an act of disobedience in the Cannon Office building, you can see that view right there. A progressive group of Jewish Americans gathered to call for an immediate ceasefire in that Israel-Hamas war. Capitol Police say they have close to 300 people in custody. At least three of those protesters have been charged with assault on a police officer. Wednesday, President Biden spent the day in Israel, his visit to that active war zone in effort to help calm the waters there. The president's trip was a show of solidarity with the nation of Israel, but it was also an effort to ensure aid reaches the people of Gaza. Palestinian civilians are suffering through a humanitarian disaster triggered by Israel's response to the Hamas terrorist attack that killed more than 1,400 people in Israel. And speaking of that aid, Jim, for Israel cannot be voted on until the new House Speaker is voted in. A second round of voting for Jim Jordan was unsuccessful on Wednesday. 22 Republicans voted against Jordan Wednesday. That's up from 20 who voted against him on Tuesday. He's got to get to 217 votes. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, as you probably recall, went 15 rounds in January before securing the Speaker job. A Montgomery County police sergeant is recovering in the hospital now after police say a driver intentionally struck him Wednesday morning on I-270. Yeah, they say a teenage driver was taunting the officer by speeding on and off the interstate near the Clarksburg exit. Now, News 4's Amy Cho reports police say the driver targeted Sergeant Patrick Kep. Just a heartbreaking update to share with you. We have now learned the sergeant who was hit by a car this morning has had both of his legs amputated. He is still in the hospital and obviously has a long road to recovery ahead. Now, police say the teenager who was behind that wheel allegedly had a long history of reckless driving and investigators believe that teenager hit the sergeant on purpose. Chilling moments along I-270 this morning as a Montgomery County police sergeant managed to radio for help after being hit by a driver. Whiskey 10, I got hit. I need fire rescue. I'm at Watkins Mill. Sergeant Patrick Kep was part of a team this morning that was trying to stop a reckless teenage driver who was allegedly doing donuts and speeding 110 miles an hour down I-270. Police say Sergeant Kep was putting out stop sticks to try to deflate the car's tires when the driver allegedly hit him on purpose, then kept going. We need a fire rescue here now. They're coming. Let's make sure somebody's with them. Police say other officers quickly did first aid, which likely saved Sergeant Kep's life. Today is a another tough day uh, for the Montgomery County Police Department. Um, we find ourselves praying uh, for the recovery of uh, one of our own. Police say the driver was 19-year-old Rafael Mayorga from Frederick, Maryland, and that he had a long history of reckless driving, to the point where Sergeant Kep had arrested him before. That case happened in May, with Mayorga allegedly going 136 miles, down 270. Be so well known that this is what he does. He, he does this intentionally uh, to bait officers into chasing him. Um, as if this is some sort of a video game. He is an example of somebody who should not be put back on the street, period. Today, County Executive Mark Elrich promising to look at increasing the penalties for repeat reckless drivers. Sergeant Kep, you want to thank him for his service, but I want to express my sorrow about his sacrifice. This is a sacrifice he should not have had 
to make. And again, that driver is 19-year-old Rafael Mayorga. He has now been arrested and charged with attempted murder of Sergeant Kep. Now, News 4 obtained court documents showing Sergeant Kep actually tried to pull over Mayorga two years ago, but Mayorga drove off and allegedly hit someone else and injured that person too. Mayorga was a minor at the time, so that case was handled in juvenile court. Amy Cho, News 4. Outrageous. Absolutely. Our hearts got to. Sergeant Kep and his family. Now let's turn to the district to a mess left behind on 295 after a truck smashed into a pedestrian bridge. DC Fire and EMS Jim are saying that the truck had a heavy load and it hit the bridge southbound at 295 near the Douglas Street Northeast. Take a look at the mess. Mm -hmm. It happened around noon on Wednesday. That truck kept going after the crash, leaving large pieces of debris scattered all over the roadway there. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Investigators tell us there is some superficial damage to the bottom of the bridge. DDOT engineers are now evaluating to see what repairs will be needed. All lanes of I-295 southbound are back open. More people are being held accountable for that deadly crash on the Baltimore Beltway that killed six highway workers earlier this year. A new Maryland Occupational Safety and Health investigation is placing blame on the State Highway Administration. So back in March, police say a speeding driver clipped another car, went through the Jersey barrier and into the work zone. The SHA is being cited for failing to post legible traffic control signs near the construction zone. The citation says the signs should have been warning about drivers with construction vehicles coming in and out of the work zone. In a statement, SHA says the signs would not have prevented the crash from occurring. Two drivers involved in the crash face several charges, including manslaughter and reckless driving. Well, October is National Pedestrian Safety Month, and there are two new pedestrian safety initiatives that could impact the way you drive around here. Yeah, the town of Virginia and the city of Falls Church both have campaigns in effect to affect both the speed and safety on the roads. News Force Transportation reporter Adam Tuss has our details. Look, make eye contact before crossing. These signs are part of the town of Vienna's eye to eye campaign and they've started going up at crosswalks. This was a recommendation from Vienna's pedestrian advisory committee and the signs are already sparking debate. Drivers in the Northern Virginia community generally are in a hurry. Many pedestrians here are cautious while crossing, but this issue may go deeper than that. This resident didn't want to talk on camera, but gives her take on the signs. It's a nice idea. However, in reality, it's putting the onus on the pedestrian, that the pedestrian has to wave down the busy driver who's not looking at us, make eye contact so we can walk across a crosswalk, which by law is supposed to be for pedestrians and the cars have to stop. Now look, most of the time when you go into the middle of a crosswalk here, you would think that you would make eye contact with the driver, but people in this community, they say they're skeptical that drivers will even stop when they go in the crosswalk. Sometimes they stop, sometimes they don't. So you just have to trust that they're not going to. These eye to eye signs will be moved around to other locations, reminding everyone to be safe. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the city of Falls Church, you'll now have to drive slower on most residential roads. All right, here we go. Here's our campaign. It's 20 is plenty and residents are going to proudly display this in their yards to encourage people to pay attention to the new speed limit. Over the next few weeks, new speed limit signs will be put in place, officially lowering the speed limit from 25 miles an hour to 20 on many streets. When there's a reduction in speed, even from 25 miles per hour down to 20, that pedestrians are infinitely much safer should they be involved in a crash. They have a much higher survivability rate. Good reminders to be aware on the roads. Across the country last year, pedestrian deaths were the highest in 41 years in Northern Virginia. Adam Tuss, News 4. Prince George's County Police, uh, the, the, the county rather, is taking steps to limit where marijuana dispensaries can be located around the county. A measure that just passed a key committee would require new shops to be located in industrial areas. While there was support for the legislation, our Darcy Spencer reports dispensary owners say it would hurt this growing industry. Prince George's County has nine marijuana dispensaries. Some like Marion, Maine in Capitol Heights are in commercial centers. Others like Wave are tucked away in a more secluded area. 
Under legislation that has majority support on the council, any new dispensaries would have to be located in heavy and light industrial areas. We know that the actual facility will be guarded, but what about outside? What about around? If you put it so close to our communities, it's a risk, and it's a risk that I don't think is worth taking. At a public hearing on the bill, some spoke against having the dispensaries in their communities and against marijuana in general. Recreational marijuana is legal in the state for those 21 and older. I know it's a business and all they think about is money. Let's think about our black and brown children. An amendment that would have allowed dispensaries in commercial zones like shopping centers failed. Hope Wiseman, owner of Marion, Maine, says she's the youngest black woman in the U.S. to own a dispensary. This is almost like fear mongling. When I, a lot of the things I hear just let me know that the propaganda used to push the war on drugs is alive and well still today. An additional eight dispensary licenses are expected to be granted in the county. Cal Shaw owns Wave in Greenbelt. He says this would make it harder for businesses to find a location, that there's a lot of misinformation about the industry. We are only serving adults 21 and over and we do have enforcement, we do have security, we do uh, ID checking. Supporters of the bill point to the proliferation of tobacco, vape, and liquor stores in the county. They want to be proactive, setting rules about where they want these shops to go before it's too late. Some people talk that if we put an industrial zone, there'll be a marketing issue. Those who want it and need it will go to it. Again, the dispensaries that are already operating here in the county would not be affected by this legislation. It's expected to come up for a final vote later next month. In Glen Arden, Darcy Spencer, News 4. Thank you, Darcy. And this weekend, a Northern Virginia man will receive a Heroes Award proclamation for rushing into a burning home to save his young daughter from fire. News 4 told you about Dominic Walker's heroics back in July while he was in a medically induced coma, if you remember. He's recovering from third degree burns. Now he's home in Prince William County and is doing his first sit down interview with our very own Drew Wilder. In his first sit-down interview, Dominic Walker's arms and legs are still covered as they heal from skin grafts. His face tells part of the story. Third degree burns when the home he was inside blew up in July just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. That's Dominic sitting in the yard having just escaped the explosion for the second time. The first time, he kicked through a window because the door was covered in fire. Once outside, he realized his daughter was still inside. He found her trapped underneath the collapsed roof that was burning on top of her. I went inside and I lifted it up and, and she came and got her. And it's on fire? Yes. In a moment, a father became almost superhuman as he hoisted a fallen roof off of four-year-old Mariah while that roof burned the skin off of his body. I had to go in there and, and, and do that. Something, you know, it, it just wouldn't have been any other way. Mariah had first-degree burns, Dominic third-degree burns. News 4 talked with Dominic's mother while she was at the hospital with them. When I got here, I saw my son. I almost told them that wasn't my son because I couldn't recognize my own child. He was burned so badly. Dominic was put into a medically induced coma for three weeks. As soon as I woke up, I'm like, where's Mariah? You know, is she okay? Her face was badly burned, but she's alive because of her dad. The next time he sees her, the family is celebrating her fifth birthday in the hospital. I know, open them gifts. He got to see his little girl laugh and smile again. Happy birthday. <laughs> but quickly he was reminded of how much has changed. The video of the party pans over to show him. So badly burned, his hair cut off, his daughter didn't even recognize him. That hurt a lot, you know, and I'm like, sitting in the wheelchair, I couldn't really do much about it, but she did come up and give me a hug and, you know, she, once she heard my voice, she was like, okay, that's that. <laughs> Doctors weren't sure when or if he'd walk again. Talking again could have taken months. He says his doctors are blown away because he's already doing both. Though he's learning how to do everything all over again, even picking up a fork, scrolling on a cell phone. You never really know what can change in five minutes. Enjoy life and, and be more caring towards others. It's extraordinary how you see the world, he says when that world is nearly taken away from you. Reporting in Woodbridge, Drew Wilder, News 4. Just amazing. Yeah.
Great news story. Needed that today for sure. Mm -hmm. Best of luck to you and your recovery, Dominic. Prince William County is going to hold that ceremony in his honor Saturday at 2, and we're sharing all the info on the NBC Washington app. How proud his mm -hmm. daughter is going to be for life. Yep. Still ahead on the rundown, you've heard of phishing scams, right? Now there's a warning to be aware of quishing camps. Hmm. What you need to know about a new way scammers might be after your data. Plus, with Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton not seeking re-election in 2024, find out who's the latest name to enter the race to represent part of Northern Virginia. As temperatures drop, FH Fur invites you to be part of something truly heartwarming. Our Fall into Comfort Toy Drive. Through December 15th, for only $29, the experts at FH Fur will perform a comprehensive heating system inspection, ensuring your home stays snug through the chilly months ahead. The best part? 100% of the proceeds will go to the United States Marine Corps Reserve's Toys for Tots. Schedule your heating inspection today with FH Fur. 877-GOLFER-FHFUR.COM Welcome back to The Rundown. For parents whose kids are off to college or maybe already there, one of the biggest concerns, paying for that education. Always News 4 consumer reporter Susan Hogan explains how a 529 college savings plan can help and what to keep in mind before withdrawing the funds. Sending your kids off to college is an exciting time for so many families. It's one that some parents might have been saving towards for years. A 529 plan is one of the best ways that you can save for college. It's a state-sponsored investment plan that allows you to save for your kids' college education no matter how far into the future. But many families don't take advantage of this opportunity. In fact, only 30% of families used a 529 account to help pay for college this year, according to a 2023 study by Sally May. One of the benefits of a 529 savings plan is that since the money saved is invested, it has the potential to multiply over time. For example, if you opened a 529 account for a newborn this year and contributed about $250 a month, you'd have more than $113,000 when your child heads off to college in 18 years. That's more than double your $54,000 investment. One of the greatest things about it is that the money grows tax-free, and many states even give you a tax deduction. And if you get a later start, that's okay. It's still less money that you'll take out as a loan later on. The money from a 529 account has to be used on qualified education-related expenses like tuition, fees, books, supplies, computers, and room and board, as long as the student is enrolled in school. A few things to keep in mind. You need to spend the money in the same tax year, not school year, that you make the withdrawal. And be sure to keep all your receipts in case the IRS has questions later. And if you're lucky enough to have leftover 529 funds, avoid taxes and penalties by saving it for graduate school or transferring the money to another child or family member. Now, you could also use that 529 money towards tuition, even from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, but only up to $10,000 and only per student per year. I'm Susan Hogan, News 4. Former Virginia House Speaker Eileen Fillercorn has decided to run for a Northern Virginia congressional seat instead of governor. She's looking to represent the 10th district after fellow Democrat Jennifer Wexton announced last month that she will not seek re-election in 2024 due to a progressive supranuclear palsy diagnosis. Fillercorn has served in the Virginia Assembly since 2010. She says she's overseen a period of tremendous progress in Richmond and wants to bring her expertise to a, quote, broken Washington. Filler Corn currently lives just outside the 10th district. NBC Universal News Group is asking a judge now to allow cameras in the courtroom in the election interference trial of former President Trump. In an application filed last week, NBC Universal asked the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia to consider allowing video and audio recordings of the March 2024 trial. Now, the filing asks that the court consider the powerful First Amendment values and the extraordinary importance of the proceedings in making its decision. Earlier this month, the coalition of media outlets, including the New York Times and the Associated Press, filed a separate application also asking for cameras in the courtroom. A long-standing court rule prohibits broadcasting federal criminal court proceedings. NBC Universal Media is the parent company of NBC4. 
We'll see how that all turns out. Mm -hmm. And you've heard of phishing. Now what about quishing? It's the latest way scammers are trying to get your money and maybe even your identity. Yeah, and you got to watch out with your cell phones, folks. The Better Business Bureau says it's seen an increase in so-called quishing scams, which are scams using those QR codes. And it will lead you to a phishing website that's going to help extract your personal information, your financial information. It also could download malware onto your device. So what can you do to protect yourself? Do your research. Anyone can stick a QR code anywhere, so be sure to check the URL when you scan the code. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. And X, the app formerly known as Twitter, is testing out an annual $1 subscription for new unverified accounts. The social media platform says the move is in part to combat spam and bot activity. This is the first going to be tested in New Zealand and the Philippines. Users who are unable or unwilling to pay the fee will only be able to view posts or follow account. No words on when this may go out worldwide. All right, some news for your health now. If you hit the snooze button to grab a few extra minutes of sleep in the morning, you're not alone. Nearly 70% of people admitted to hitting snooze. Guilty. Sometimes, yeah, Tommy does it, according to the Journal of Sleep Research. The journal is out with new research now suggesting that hitting the snooze could actually have some benefits. Sleep expert Dr. Carol Ash broke down the findings on the Today Show. What the study showed is when you hit the snooze button, you actually wake up and have improved cognitive performance or better thinking, but your mood, you're still miserable and you're still drowsy. <laughs> We're still miserable, huh? <laughs> Dr. Ash said, if you don't know if you're a night owl or a morning person, try going away for two weeks and see what your sleep preferences are. Hmm. She also advised paying attention throughout the day to see where you feel more alert. All I need is like a two week yeah. stretch of vacation. When you took that month off Seems in the summer, fair, right? did your sleep, what were your sleep patterns? Oh, did they I, adjust? Were, totally. I slept until yeah. like nine o'clock. You'd have loved me. I was slept and, and tired and, and refreshed and charming. It was great. <laughs> Not that you aren't always, <laughs> yeah, even sleepless. Like Coming up on the rundown, we ask who you think the zoo animal of the future should be. Which one should step into the spotlight when the pandas head off to China later on this year? We're going to break down the top four competitors and reveal how some of the zoo animals and their keepers are campaigning for votes when we come right back. Look who's back. With the pandas getting set to leave D.C. by the end of this year, we're getting your take on which zoo animal should be next to step into the spotlight. We're calling it D.C.'s Next animal obsession and voting is up on our website now. We've got a ton of votes uh -huh. already, Tommy. Jim, it's been amazing. Down to the top four already, if you can believe it. And thank you for those votes. Over 28,000 votes have come in already. And on. we also have a QR code mm -hmm. to help them vote. Yes, and it's not a Cushing QR code. It's a real one. So you can <laughs> scan that. NBCWashington.com slash vote. So our top four, here's who they are. We've got the bald eagle. We've got the meerkat. We've got the North American river otter and Basil, the one-eyed rescue possum from Virginia. Wow. Yeah. So I went out That's today to lot. the zoo and I met, I met our top four. It really is a tale now of the small mammal house versus the American trail. With Meerkat facing off against the bald eagle and Basil, the rescue one-eyed Virginia possum against the North American river otter. Each side has taken to campaigning a little differently. The bald eagle leaning on its record without any fanfare looking prestigious. The American river otter just besting the red panda looking totally relaxed, cool, swimming, diving, being adorable. In a small mammal house, more of a rally atmosphere. The meerkat team creating signs. Get it? Because a group of meerkats is called a mob. A lot of activity at Meerkat HQ. And Basil, the one-eyed rescue possum from Virginia, making it clear a vote for Basil is a vote for D.C., trying to drum up that hometown crowd support. We'll see, though. Can the Cinderella story continue? With a wink and a QR code, Basil is asking for your vote. All right, so objectively and completely impartially, I'm just here to say I'm in the tank for Basil. I think Basil should win. Right. But it was so cool going to the small yeah. mammal house today and seeing oh those. Gosh. I didn't know that they had signs up in their exhibits about this. With our QR code. Yeah, and all That's the voting. Cool. And all the voting. So what do you think? I'm going to give you our two okay. final matchups here, all right. Tim, as we're making our way down the bracket. I hope it's the one I like. The one meerkat versus the bald eagle. Okay. 
The bald eagle is, is regal. I know you feel you got to yeah. say it because it's America's symbol. Yeah. But who doesn't love a bald eagle? Mm -hmm. But the meerkat, you never say a bald eagle is cute. Meerkat's kind of <laughs> pretty true. darn cute, yes. right? Got okay. that Timon and Pumbaa vibe to it. Right, there you go. All right, how about our final matchup? The one-eyed possum from Virginia, Basil, the rescue, or the river otter. That's what you like. The river otter, though, just, just beat the red panda in the last bracket battle. Really? Yeah. So it keeps fluctuating. Mm -hmm, it's going mm -hmm. all over the place. So who's this your is pick? exciting. What do you think? I, I'm going with Meerkat. You're going with Meerkat? Yeah. Okay. Well, who's your pick in this in this matchup? Well, this one, I I don't know. I don't have a I don't have a dog, dog in, in that the, one. In yeah, the, in the so bracket. I'll go with River Otter. I got a possum need in some it. Help. Hit the QR <laughs> code. Vote for Basil. Basil has gotten the most votes so far out of really? anyone in the competition. True Cinderella story. Making That's their way great. Out. Yeah. All right. Remember the name. There you go. NBCWashington.com slash zoo if you want to get involved. We've got the top four happening now. We'll have the big battle at the, the championship, and we'll see who you think should be DC's next animal obsession. That's pretty exciting. There you go. This Stay is for tuned. you. Oh, can I? This thing, <laughs> it's been like an appendage on you for weeks now, Tommy McFly. Thanks for joining us for the rundown. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Jim Hanley. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good one, everybody.